Hi everyone, thank you for joining on to this webinar. A little bit about myself, my name's Nicole and I've done a degree in sport and exercise science and I now work as a health advisor for Bupa. Within my role I promote a positive lifestyle through looking at people's health and well-being. Today's topic is keeping active from home which is particularly important to review at this current time as we are spending a lot more time indoors and potentially working from home and this can disrupt our typical routine. Today we will cover the physical activity guidelines for health, exercise guidelines, the benefits of physical activity and how to set yourself up for success. I want to change the perspective that fitting more physical activity into your day is difficult and to prove that it can even be fun. And I ultimately hope some meaningful change for yourselves and others you talk to will occur. So what is physical activity? Physical activity is defined as any bodily movement produced by skeletal muscles that requires energy expenditure. Adults should aim to be da active daily. Over a week, activity should add up to at least 150 minutes, which is two and a half hours, of moderate intensity activity. And one way to approach this is to do 30 minutes on at least five days a week. Alternatively, comparable benefits can be achieved through partaking in 75 minutes of vigorous intensity activity spread across the week or a combination of moderate and vigorous intensity activity. Alongside this, adults should undertake physical activity to improve muscle strength on at least two days a week and minimise the time that they are spent sedentary for extended periods. Examples of moderate intensity include a brisk walk or cycle outside, which can make use of a one excursion outside following government rules. Or at home, activities can include gardening, indoor cycling or hoovering. And at this intensity, you should be working at a level where you can still hold a conversation. Vigorous exercise examples could involve kicking a football about, playing basketball, running, hill walking or fast cycling. Again, making sure that we're following government guidelines. This intensity is where you are very out of breath and probably sweating. If you could put all the benefits of physical activity into a pill, someone would become extremely rich. It would be a wonder drug. We'll look more closely at the many benefits of physical activity shortly. But what we cannot forget, but often do, is our past, our ancestry. We're an active species and we're designed to be active, not sat at desks or staring at screens. As the decades roll on, we move further and further away from our evolutionary past at ever increasing rates. Lifestyles have become more and more sedentary, having cars and public transport and more deskbound jobs. I think of my grandparents who would cycle 20 miles just to see each other. Physical activity was a necessary form of transport. We're not designed to exercise for fun, it's evolutionary. We used to be a hunting, gathering species, and it wasn't just a pastime. In today's current society, a lot of us aren't even leaving the house to go to work, and so may have become naturally more sedentary throughout the day. Finding ways to, be, to help yourself be active is crucial. Find things you enjoy and structure your life and environment so activity is part of your new routine. Thinking about the physical activity guidelines for health, and I want you to think, what might be better out of 10,000 steps or 10 active minutes three times per day? It isn't really an either or actually. The three times 10 active minutes is based on past government guidelines, which stated that to obtain the benefits of exercise, it needed to be for at least 10 minutes in duration at a moderate intensity, where the heart rate and breathing rate are both elevated and you're feeling warmer. This has changed now, and any exercise in whatever time bouts all counts towards your weekly amount of physical activity. It's important to note that sitting time, independent of whether we hit the weekly activity requirements, also increases our risk, our risk of many diseases, and so aiming for 10,000 steps a day does encourage us to reduce sedentary time. The idea of doing 10,000 steps a day, which is approximately five miles, comes from an old Japanese advertising campaign in the 60s. We can ask, which is better, 
150 minutes of moderate activity per week or 75 minutes of vigorous. To be honest, it's better to go with what's best for you as there are very similar health benefits. Similarly, we could ask, is strength or cardiovascular exercise better? Both. Strength training is recommended twice a week, including all major muscle groups for musculoskeletal health. It becomes especially important as we get older to reduce the rate at which our muscles atrophy, which means to get smaller. Let's take a look. Sarcopenia has been defined as an age-related involuntary loss of skeletal muscle mass and strength and thus loss of functional capacity. From the age of 30, we begin to lose muscle mass. This can be as much as three to 5% per decade in physically inactive people. And the only way to reduce the rate of this muscle atrophy is through physical activity, particularly resistance exercise. The benefits of resistance exercise will occur at any age, so it is never too late to start. It is said that there is not a pharmaceutical intervention that is better than exercise to help promote independence and health in the elderly. Hitting the previous physical activity recommendations will hugely benefit our health. I'm sure most of us know the benefits of physical activity, but just to refresh and consider motivation. There is strong evidence that regular physical activity reduces the risk of bowel, breast and womb cancer. It can also help to reduce and manage weight, which in turn helps to reduce the risk of 13 types of cancer. Obesity is actually the biggest controllable, the second biggest controllable cause of cancer after smoking. Hitting the physical activity recommendations can reduce the risk of heart disease, strokes, osteoporosis, and also reduce the risk of diabetes by up to 40%. It can reduce the risk of anxiety and depression and boost your mood and well-being. This is particularly important at the moment when we're in isolation and have less human contact, which can impact our mental health. Alongside this, a study conducted in 2018 argued that cardiorespiratory fitness is a stronger predictor for long-term long cardiovascular and all-cause mortality than conventional factors such as blood pressure, high cholesterol, obesity, and insulin resistance. If participants' cardiovascular fitness score, which was measured by their VO2 max, were in the top 5% versus the bottom 5%, there was a difference in life expectancy of five years. Also, moving from the bottom 5% to the lower normal increased life expectancy by two years. We have spoken about what physical activity is. Now a great place to look is what our focus area might be. This could be endurance training, which generally refers to training the aerobic system and increasing stamina, keeping your heart, lungs and circulatory system healthy and improving your overall fitness. Or flexibility training, which refers to developing the joint and surrounding muscles to move through a specific range of motion with ease and without pain. Flexibility is an important component of physical fitness and has many positive effects on the body. For instance, it improves mobility, posture, muscle coordination, and reduces the risk of injuries and muscle soreness. Agility refers to the ability to start, stop, and change direction, change direction quickly while maintaining a proper posture. This is often useful when playing sport and having to chase a ball or lose a defender. Muscular power is the ability to exert a maximal force over a short period of time, such as when accelerating, jumping or throwing. Muscular endurance refers to the number of repetitions of a single exercise you can do without needing to stop and rest. Both muscular strength and endurance are beneficial to increase your ability to do activities like hoovering, lifting boxes or gardening without getting tired. So how can we stay active? Aer aerobic exercise will vary for everyone depending on how much space you have. It can take many different forms. It could be doing housework like hoovering or putting your three favourite songs on and having a dance around the flat. 
Online, there are great resources for exercise, particularly YouTube. I'm currently a fan of Joe Wicks, the body coach, who is doing beginner's hip training sessions around 20 minutes long. Even though we aren't exercising with others at the moment, you could still enter a social contract with a friend or family member to say that you will both do an online class three times a week or do the workouts together through a video call app to motivate each other. At the moment, our routines have changed and muscle strengthening exercises that we would normally do might not be present. For example, you might usually lift boxes at work, carry heavy bags on your commute, or go to the gym to do a workout. And we aren't able to do this now. This means we might have to make a more conscious effort to include our resistance exercises into our routine. This could include looking at online tutorials for yoga or Pilates. If you do need to go outside and do an essential food shop, you might choose to walk to the supermarket and carry your bags home. You can also count physical jobs such as DIY or gardening as a resistance activity. Body weight exercises are another great way to perform resistance exercise, such as squats, lunges or tricep dips. There are many examples available online. If you do have weights at home, then great. If not, you can use household items that you're able to grip well to, such as water bottles, and try to do 8 to 12 reps with 2 to 3 sets working all the major muscle groups. Ultimately, find something you enjoy, it doesn't matter what it is. So I touched on HIIT sessions briefly in the previous slide, but what actually is it? HIIT stands for High Intensity Interval Training and refers to any type of exercise that you do for a short amount of time at a maximal or near maximal effort with a rest period afterwards. It is generally a very pe popular method of exercising because it is an efficient way of increasing your fitness and burning calories. It can be adapted to suit all ages and fitness levels and is generally very safe when done correctly. However, Bouts of intensive exercise can cause short-term spikes in blood pressure. I would advise avoiding HIT if you have any medical conditions such as uncontrolled blood pressure, asthma or joint disease. Or if you haven't done the exercise before, try and modify them or do something different. Also, if you have a fever or are recovering from COVID symptoms, then I recommend that you avoid vigorous exercise and gradually work your way back into your normal routine. Listen to your body and stop if any chest pains, tightness or dizziness occur. HIIT helps to elevate metabolism and therefore lose weight. It can help fat mobilisation in muscle, improve blood sugar regulation and increase cardiovascular fitness. HIIT can also help to improve vascular function through decreasing blood pressure and heart rate. At the present time, we have mentioned our routines might have switched up. Therefore, trying a new exercise might not be at the top of your list. However, we know that, pe However, we know that pe many people will enjoy us because it takes less time to do. You might alternate 30 seconds of intensive exercise with 20 seconds of rest for however many minutes you like. We would always suggest starting slow and progressively building your way up. We've talked about the benefits of exercise and some options of what you can do at home. Just a few other examples available from the Boopa Health blog include HIIT video workouts from Harrison Cook, who does 10 minute workouts with 30 seconds on and 30 seconds of rest. Yoga and chair based exercises from our physio Lucy and core building exercise from our physiotherapist. Have a look at the Boopa Healthy Me blog and see if there are any other home workouts or exercises that you would like to try. So now it's time to think about what your goal is. Physical activity for health or performance, we're all different. Your goals may have changed slightly with the current climate and the majority of sporting events cancelled. Therefore, it can be a good idea to use the SMART goals method to review and update your goal and think about what you're currently able to do. You may have already heard of SMART model for goal setting. Knowing what you're aiming for is a crucial in the first instance and we as health advisors often use it with customers to help break down a goal into five parts. The goal needs to be specific, measurable, 
achievable, realistic, and given a set time frame. Your goal doesn't have to be to do with weightlifting or running, as I know many people say to me they don't enjoy this. Don't use that as an excuse. And try and find something you do like. It might be that you want to learn how to salsa dance, and you could use a YouTube video to help you in your quest. An example of a smart goal might be, I want to copy a hit workout on YouTube twice a week for 20 minutes and work at a high intensity. Looking at the principles of fit, you can begin to structure your exercise program and progress your fitness. Frequency refers to how often you will exercise. After any form of exercise, your body completes a process of rebuilding and repairing. So determining the frequency of exercise is important in order to find a balance that provides just enough stress for the body to adapt and allows enough rest time for healing. I've recently started to put a lot more effort into my HIIT workouts and I'm finding that I definitely need a day's rest in between in order for my body to fully heal. Intensity is the amount of effort that you put into a specific exercise or workout. This too requires a good balance to ensure that the intensity is hard enough to overload the body, but not so difficult that it results in overtraining, injury or burnout. A lot of people can self-pace their own intensity and push themselves hard enough, but if you have the technology available, such as Fitbits, Apple Watches or the Health app on your phone, you can look at your heart rate, your calories burned or distance completed. Type. What type of exercise will you be doing? Will an exercise session be primarily cardiovascular, resistance training, or a combination of both? And what specific exercises will you perform? Writing a plan or route beforehand is a good idea. Finally, time. Time is simply how long each session should last. This will vary based on the intensity and type. Manage your expectations and plan the first two weeks of exercise. The current government guidelines might change again, so it's better to plan for two weeks with the current rules and then reassess if anything changes. Be patient and expect slow gains to start with, and be sure to have regular rest days. Overexercising in the first few days or weeks can leave you feeling stiff, sore and even unwell and is likely to put you off. I always remind people that 10 minutes is better than nothing, so just get out and do 10 minutes chances are you'll end up doing something longer anyway. As a final thought, it may be worth mentioning wearables. These might not be getting as much use as usual due to being inside a lot more and therefore maybe a bit less exercise. However, I think they can still be beneficial to help us be aware of our status, such as how many steps we've taken or if we've been set down too long. A Fitbit or type of watch could tell you those things. I've spoken to a lot of people who are walking a lot less than they usually do as they're not commuting. What I've said to them is that you should set a step goal that's slightly higher than what you've been doing at home in the past weeks and see if you can achieve it. Then the wearable is still being used to help you set, monitor and track those goals. It might also be that you're using your one excursion to fit in a good cycle, walk or run. And things such as Strava or Garmin could help you measure heart rate, your pace and distance, and then potentially share this with your friends. I think wearables can be used for both performance and health, depending on what your goal is. On this slide, there are links for further support. The top one being the Bupa Coronavirus Hub, which is updated with regular information. So to summarise, we've looked at how to find an exercise that works for you, how to set SMART goals, and also structuring your fitness programme. Thank you for listening, and I hope there's been some interesting information for you.